Hello and welcome. You're tuned to the Leg Up, your weekly thoroughbred preview and review show. And it doesn't get too much bigger than this. The first group one of the season, Tarzino Day, joined in the studio by the usual suspects, Paul Mawadi, Stephen Hunter. You're running through brick walls, Paul. You're fizzing for tomorrow? Oh. Plenty a, on, plenty on. There is something for everyone. Yes. Um, if you're not excited about tomorrow, if you're not excited about Saturday in terms of racing and sport, you probably want to check your pulse because you may be unalive. <laughs> Tarzino Field's come up well too. What a field. Yeah, yeah. Have a look at the top there. But it, yeah. it just it doesn't end at the top of the market either. There is some You can't very... put the pencil through too many, I don't think. We'll obviously touch on this race in more depth shortly. But... No, you can't. Mm. You can't. And, and it's been shown by the betting patterns as well. There's a good spread of money, um, certainly across the top five in the market mm. and then there's also a wee bit of speaking about others so yeah, yeah. yeah it's wide over a wonderful wonderful group one field yep. the first group one of the season yeah. great to see yeah and we look like we'll be uh, on a reasonable track there too uh, good morning Steve good yeah, morning Thaddeus morning Paul and everybody yeah looking at for a possible upgrade come race one tomorrow it's currently in that five pentrometer reading always a tough day on the punt day one at the bay over mm, that three day mm. carnival there's roughly 140 odd horses down to start and 60 of them a first up, so that's roughly around about 40% of mm. horses that are resuming on the back of trials, jump outs, etc., which makes it very tough for the punters. Yeah, for sure. Speaking of upgrades, Wanganui got one uh, last Saturday, uh, pretty early on, relatively early on. Maybe a little bit It was bit funny because uh, I tweeted early in the week, Wanganui, it was rated a heavy 10 on Monday leading into the Saturday. On Friday, it was upgraded to a 9 when we aired the show seven days ago. And then from 24 hours, from Friday to roughly early doors in the afternoon on race day Saturday, it was a soft 6. So, look, overall, I thought the track played really well, but... Yeah, a bit disappointing how it got such a, a great upgrade in that 24-hour bracket. Just feel for the punters that shopped early doors on Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. Yeah. And Chantilly Lace, though, got the job done in the Guineas. Yeah, it was a good Impressive. performance. We'll touch yeah. on her performance as a whole and her chances in the gold trail. And Rickerton also played fairly well, I thought, last Saturday. Some yeah. decent flux. We'll talk about those yeah, fluctuations yeah. earlier in the, or later in the show. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, there were some firmers that disappointed. And also some horses that defied the drift and winning. Yeah, OK. Well, it's always good to have a man on the ground, and we've got one. Uh, good morning to Brendan Popwell, BP. Saturdays don't come much bigger than this. They certainly don't, Thad. A very good morning to you and everybody that's tuning in. Uh, look, what a day in front of us. It starts at quarter past seven in the morning, doesn't it, with the All Blacks kicking off the Rugby World Cup and then rolls into what is going to be a spectacular day here, day number one of the carnival and the racing surface uh, at its absolute best, you would say, leading into this race day. Of course, we haven't had a racing surface like this for a couple of years. You have to go back to sort of 2019, 2020, when we've been able to work out horses that are racing on good to sort of dead form uh, back in that, uh, that 2019, 2020 period with a, a number of heavy tracks uh, on this day. So we, we've got ourselves a super day. And I guess that makes it interesting is what Stephen's point there around horses that uh, are coming into this first up. That's going to be, uh, a lot of those horses are going to appreciate that, of course, uh, coming here first up on a heavy 10 surface. We've seen some of those favourites defeated. And of course, you've got that flow on effect from horses that race through the winter. So combination of some really good form lines and the group one, you'd have to say the Tarzino is without a doubt the best field we have seen for a number of years and possibly could even be the best. Yeah, well, speaking of the Tarzino BP, it's, uh, you know, it's the first group one of the season. We've asked you boys to put together some of your favourite Tarzinos just to relive them for us, some of those great calls, and uh, here's a little package surrounding that. He got up from the dead to win. The jewel wide of Bell Muse and look at excellent! Look at excellent flying right down the outside! Amazing! He is a megastar! Excellent, outstanding! You won't see this again. Absolutely amazing. They race down 100 metres to go. Tavistock, Mufas is digging on the inside. Tavistock's just in front and Tavistock gets the mudgeway. 
at $40.60. But he just had the advantage here, and Tavistock gets the prize. Wider out, Melody Bell. She's starting to charge home as well. Winsville going after Helena Baby Bird. Here she comes. Melody Bell. Melody Bell wins it. Class performance. Wow, she's back. She is brilliant this week, girl. Gee, you've got to be a good horse to win a Tarzino, that's for sure. Just having a look back at some of those. And a few of these notable winners, I mean, Melody Bell won 14 Group 1s. Mufasa won 10 Group 1s. Uh, he was just knocked off by Tavistock in that one, Ocean Park. Well, all won the Cox Plate in 2012. Rough Habit, well, we all know how good Rough Habit was, 11-time Group 1 winner. Sunline, well, she needs no introduction. 13 Group 1 races throughout Australasia. Two Cox Plates, but the list goes on. Uh, sea Change, Kawi, Melody Bell and Call Sign Mav are all back-to-back -back winners of the race. In fact, I think Call Sign Mav... Would be the first horse to win it three times, Steve. I think that may be right if he can. It's a good question. Yeah, it's a good okay. question. In recent times, definitely. Mm, yeah, uh, okay. I was no. on Miss, Poten Miss Potential uh, in both those videos we saw, Starcraft and Excellent. So I was counting the money in both of them almost. And oh, it was beaten a, by two champs. It was a great sad day to be at work. Those two sad days. I'll give you the tip now. <laughs> Crying, I was. She was a great horse in her own right. Lance Sullivan was Miss Potential. Lance he won four. Oh, did he? On four different. Different mouse. Surface Paradise? Surface Paradise, I could think of. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. Are you bringing a bit to the party this morning early? You had mm. prepared well. Coffee. <laughs> Coffee. Someone's, <laughs> someone's given you that info. Oh, yeah. here we go. <laughs> see it. Someone in the office. Uh, okay, let's head back up to the Bay BP. Maidener of the week time. Uh, what did you find for us this, this week? Look, I've gone to Avondale, and it, it was a race day where, of course, we had important three-year-old maiden three-year-old races to identify of course Monday Melody was was in one of them as a very short price favorite and I guess how much do we take into what we saw on this day on what was the testing surface it was uh, a shame that we had a heavy 10 track because it was a lot of trial form through these two particular races so I've gone with this one as opposed to my lips are sealed uh, who was able to beat home Monday Melody. I'm sure we'll be able to make Monday Melody a, a maiden of the week pretty shortly once that track firms up. But this was a horse that has got back, trialled nicely here at this venue under a good grip, did fond memories, uh, potentially more of a staying type of a filly. But I just like the way that she's gathered herself up and she's really gone through the line. So there should be enough through that race. Uh, Geriatrics, who was also beaten in that particular race as a horse to follow once he gets himself uh, on a better track. You'd have to say both those maiden three-year-old races, even though the track condition wasn't uh, there for a lot of those uh, horses, are still worth following with what we saw there out of Avondale. You can't count on me like one, two, three. Time to crunch the numbers for another week. Uh, any numbers around fond memories, um, um, BP's? Main of the week, yeah, as yet? No, it's impressive not yet. on the aisle, uh, wasn't it? It was impressive on the aisle. Come back next week, hopefully, with some numbers around her. But she was a, a decent firm when it came to the thousand guineas and the first eminent to win. Yes. In uh, definitely the southern hemisphere. So uh, he's a stallion by Frankel, who stands up north. And mm. uh, yeah, look out for his progeny. Definitely over a bit more ground, too. Okay, very good. Well, we, uh, you pick out a race for us or something, some sort of numbers you want to see uh, from last week. What have you sort of come across for us this week in crunching the numbers? I'm going to go to the Tarzino Trophy and identify four-year-olds. How have they fared in the last roughly 17-odd years? Since 2006, there's been 59 four-year-olds that have contested the Wait for Age Group 1 at Hastings. In that 17 years, four-year-olds have made up to roughly 25% of the Tarzino fields. In terms of expectation, Thaddeus, the market mm -hmm. says four-year-olds would win 38% 30, of them, yeah. uh, which works out to be roughly six to seven in the last 17 years. As it's turned out, four-year-olds have won nine of the last 17, mm -hmm. exceeding market expectation, which an actual strike rate of 53%, very healthy indeed. You look at there, the POT. Now, if you'd placed a dollar win bet on each of the 59 runners, your profit on turnover would be an impressive plus 186%. Note, Corsign Mav did win a few years ago at $81. So mm. if, even if you exclude his win at a big SP, it's still a very, very healthy plus 49% in terms of POT. So we don't have to worry about these three-year-olds transitioning to four in the wait for age. Sometimes that's a feeling around that they're taking the step out of the small pool into the open 
great, but they're obviously performing well. There might be a little well, edge there for Absolutely. Justin. They're undervaluing, which I thought naturally during the week they might have been overplayed four-year-olds because they bring that profile yeah. as three-year-olds coming yeah. against horses that have maybe found their ceiling, but that's not the case. We know there's six four-year-olds contesting the Tarzino Trophy tomorrow, yeah, yeah. headed by the favourite in Legato. So older is not necessarily bolder. Yeah. <laughs> So don't sort of say that sort of stuff around you and us. We've still got a bit of fight in the old dog, surely. But wait, are you, show, are you saying Steve's the four-year-old Steve's year old a spring the chicken. He's a spring chicken. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, it's a shame. Uh, right, oh boys, time to head up to the bay. Uh, it looks like we're going to have a decent track. Let's have a... Well, we've seen the weather behind BP. Weather and track, Steve. Yeah, soft five. Uh, definitely look for that upgrade during the race day to a four. Might even come prior to race one at Hastings. Now, we've had two meetings in July, no meetings in August, so it's had a decent break, Hastings, but when we had our two meetings in July, on the 20th of July, the rail was out 10 metres, Thaddeus. Yeah. On the 1st of July, the rail was out 7 metres, so the rail's back in the true position, and like Tirapa two weeks ago, there will be a decent fresh strip of grass from the rail, maybe to at least 7, 8 metres out, so that gives the opportunity for back markers to come wide, and not be an inferior ground if they want to make their move. OK, that is good to know. It's good information. Uh, without further ado, race number nine on the card is the group one. Tarzino Trophy, Stephen, and an interesting market to frame up here. There's been four or five uh, that have been played between now and when betting commenced on Wednesday, Thaddeus. Legato heads the market, hasn't changed from the original price of $3.60. La Creek, interesting ma uh, market here around her. $4.80 she opened. She got backed in to roughly around about $4.50 with initial money, what we'd call smart money on Wednesday afternoon. She's just eased back out to around about $4.85. Dragon Leap, $6.50 off a peak of 7 Sharp and smart, identical in terms of a fluck with Dragon Leap, 7 into $6.50. Skill worth at a $10 price, also well played with that betting profile, Walker, Burgesson and Opie Bossom factor. Uh, Bell Clear 12, out of turn of 13, but again not soft. Pier also out of turn, but again there is some specking for Pier with better gate, 15 from the original price of 14. And a few that have been specked, again with that syndication, he's a doozy at $26 and Penny Wicker at a $31 price. Some roughies there, Springtide, Malestone, Aromatic, 50 to 1. She could run a cheeky race, betting like Creek at the Trolls, Gaspodden and Malt Time Pots. It's a great field. Probably the first place to have a best place to start having a look at is that Foxbridge plate with these horses that have had the benefit of a run. You're right, and, and uh, Dragon Leap, of course, he, he does come in with two recent victories, which puts him in a good place, doesn't it, for uh, tomorrow's race. Yes, it is a continued step up from what he beat against low-graded horses at Urukaka to then this race here in the Foxbridge because it is a step up again from the Foxbridge uh, to tomorrow's race with the addition of very good Group 1 horses in this race. What I do like about Dragon Leap is A, those factors uh, of him bringing up and running form, winning form. The track condition getting into a firmer state is a massive positive for him, as it is going for, to be for a lot of other horses in the race. But just him been able to have that change up speed. We know that he can release the jets, uh, Dragon Leap, over 12 and 1400 metres on a good surface. And the other key thing as well that the stable have been telling us is that he is bang on in terms of fitness. Uh, he's 100% uh, sound. That, that has been the issue. They've always had these little feet problems with him and he's been in that 80 to 90% zone. He, he's bang on, and, and I think that has to be a wary sign in terms of bringing residual fitness into the race, track conditions, and what he was able to do. Yes, the numbers may not stack up around what he did in the Fox Bridge, but I do think it was on the track condition that was just in his favour uh, at the back end of that soft ground and coming into this with the, the hopefully their right sort of tempo. He can be a chance. He's, he, he is, I think he's in my top four uh, in the race because of what he does bring to this race on the weekend. Yeah, he has to be, but I mean, look, Steve mentioned the fresh up runners here and Legato uh, coming through a trial, Aromatic in La Creek. I think we've got Legato's trial here. Steve, what do we what do we make of this? I thought it was a good trial. There's a few knockers out there, but you've got to remember this was over a very sharp trip, 1,100 metres. Time was almost a second faster than the other heat on the same day. And you're looking at a genuine 1,200 metre horse jumping, running, and also Imperatriz running second. So, look, she was always going to be a little bit flat-footed, but I loved her work through the line, Thaddeus. She's mm. right on song for tomorrow's assignment. Yeah, and, uh, look, I want to call it uh, Aromatics. I should call it Aromatics trial, uh, Paul, but I think you need to call it La Creek's trial. Uh, this was very <laughs> eye-catching stuff. And, look, the barrier draw a concern, but she looks like she might have returned in fine fettle. 
She certainly has. Um, she looks super, super fit. Um, uh, just the interesting, the market move on her. Uh, early money on, mm. and now she's drifted back out to 550, as Steve just mentioned. Um, Aromatic, Warren Kennedy jumps off Dragon Leap and onto Aromatic. I don't know if we read anything into that. Mm. Mm. Uh, but that was certainly a very, very um, encouraging <laughs> trial. It was a good trial. Yeah. What it was a good trial, but like I said earlier, it was almost a second slower than the previous heat that we saw Legato came out of. And even though she came down the outside and went whoosh, that particular trial had a lot of horses that were 16, 2,000 metre horses. Good mm. horses in their own right, but they didn't have the sharp sprinters like Imperatriz and what we saw in the previous trial. So yeah. just just take note that the horses that she was running past were probably horses that want 16 to 2,000 metres come later in the spring. Yeah, OK. And uh, BP, sharp and smart during the uh, week, was nominated for a Melbourne Cup. Official noms came out. But uh, he's the sort of horse you'd expect to have a bit of a spring in his step first up as well. And we saw him in an exhibition gallop, I believe. That's right. Uh, I mean, if sharp and smart wins this race tomorrow, I mean... Honestly, what will he win this this preparation? If, if he comes out and wins first up over 1,400 metres, we know that this horse is super talented. He comes out and puts a number on them here tomorrow. Wow. Arrowfield, uh, he's odds on. Does he run in the Livermore? Who knows? What, what race does he run in the Caulfield, Cox, Cox Plate, Melbourne Cup? Wow, I tell you what, they are all... <laughs> races that he can be highly competitive and if he comes out and does a job here but he could also still run a super race and finish uh, into fifth and sixth position that will have him bang on ready for an arrow field over 1600 meters i like what i've seen from him in terms of his progress from foxbridge plate day in his exhibition gallop where michael mcnab rode the horse and there that uh, that piece of work on tuesday where uh, he was with solidify with michael mcnab again uh, in the, the saddle uh, just quickly to around aromatic do understand that warren kennedy off the back of that trial of aromatic uh, that he did confirm that he would ride Aromatic for this race to Tarzino before the Foxbridge Plate, uh, which of course uh, we heard then from Warren Kennedy uh, from him post-race when Dragon Leap did win the race that he did have another ride already, uh, which was this horse here uh, in uh, Aromatic. So that, that's what I guess what we read into that uh, and sounds like that's going to be a horse that he can follow through the rest of the series and we know that you'll get better over 1,600 metres and, and 2,040 metres. So the beneficiary of that is Joe Doyle uh, with Dragon Leap. Uh, look, there's other angles we need to probably break down around this race. We've spoken about chances. Uh, Map-wise, Stephen, how do you see this race developing? We've seen La Creek come off speed. She's got a wide barrier draw. We've heard from the Alexander team saying that they would like the fact that she comes off speed better. Uh, how much speed on the inside of her is going to dictate that where maybe they do look to try and put her in a more forward position. You've got call sign Mav who's drawn uh, outside here in, in barrier number 15 and a couple of other runners that might look to put themselves in the race. So what do you see in terms of uh, pace around this race? I think there'll be initial speed always is over 1400 mm. metres wait for age. Jockey's trying to find a spot early you've got call sign Mav, Lickety Split who have drawn wide gates where well, jockeys will show intent, come across. They potentially will be 1-2 in the map. You've got Skiller for Opie Boston trying to hold a spot from a decent alley. Spring Tide, who has trailed in this particular race over mm -hmm. the years, has drawn mm -hmm. barrier one. So I doubt connections will want to be too far back on the rail there. I think they'll button off between the 1,000 and then they'll really go again at the 600-metre mark. Mm. That's normally how they unfold these wait for age 1400 metre races in New Zealand. So that's kind of how I'm seeing it shape in terms of speed and lack of speed mid race, and then they'll go again. I think with La Creek, they'll just take the medicine and go back from the wide draw. She's got a long preparation of head of her. Uh, she went back in her trial, which we saw. I just think at best she can hopefully find cover in that neutral spot, but I, I'm not sure it's going to be there. There, there mm. possibly could be a three wide train because we're seeing the rail back in the true with a nice strip, as I mentioned earlier in the show, around about seven to eight metres out. So you may see horses come down that middle part of the track because of that three wide train. Sharp and smart, Pops, where do you see him, Map? I think they ideally want to use the gate. I think the important thing around Sharp and Smart, personally, mm -hmm. is Michael McNabb staying off the rail, which could be problematic from barrier two. Yeah, I, I found it hard to try and work out where he sort of lands in the race. Um, I, I guess over a short course distance of 1,400 metres, I don't want to get too buried. Don't, as you say, I don't want to get him buried midfield. I want to make sure that he's in a, in, a, in a position where he's got space around him so he can start working into the race. So that could be problematic uh, around sharp and smart. But, 
gee, if he could, if he could land sort of that sixth or seventh one off, uh, he becomes a, an absolute danger when they start to move, doesn't he? If they can find that position that they're looking for with Sharp and Smart. I find him the enigma in the race because if, if he's in the clear and they're turning for home and he is just about and he's about to strike down the crown of the track, I, I guess we're all going to be going, oh my God, here it comes. This is this could be one of those moments of a of a Starcraft uh, finishing down the centre part of the track. It really could. I think this race sets up where we've seen some great memories uh, from uh, previous Tarzinos. I just have that type of feeling around this race that maybe we're going to get one of those moments. Uh, in tomorrow's race. Why? Because it is that full of depth. There's nine Group 1 winners in the race. You've got horses that have previously won the race a couple of times, like Call Sign Mav. And you're going to potentially get some horses that will get out to silly prices. Uh, I think that's the other thing, too. That we, I mean, Skewiff, for instance, we haven't really touched on Skewiff. This is a horse who has gone very close to winning the Foxbridge Plate, has Group 1 form from last season, has that four-year-old uh, reference that you spoke about as well, Stephen. Opie Bosson is aboard the runner and has drawn well in barrier number four and is trained by uh, the country's leading trainers, uh, yet the horse is sitting around a $10 quote. Uh, so th- that's, that's what we're dealing with here with the race in, in front of us for the Tarzino. Yeah, well, Pops makes a good point, Paul. Uh, we talked about the depth of this race. There probably are <coughs> horses that we haven't mentioned that deserve to be mentioned uh, because they have live chances to win this race. I don't mind the look of Pierre. Yeah. Um, I thought that was a, a fantastic... In fact, I thought it was the run of the Foxbridge. Uh, Stop it. I, I, <laughs> the second fastest last 200 it was uh, behind Belle Claire. Yeah. Wide the whole way. Yeah. Uh, and the widest as they came around the turn. Yeah. Um, and then really started to pick up after that. Um, I, I, let's not forget what Pierre did in, uh, down at Rickerton no, no. Uh, last season. Interesting um, to read the Stipes report around Pierre. I see that he was a little bit um, sort of potentially field shy between horses, and uh, he never travelled. No, he was he's sort of like, a long way yeah, from he home. Was, um, yeah. But apparently, he played up a little bit before getting into the machine, the barriers, the visor blinkers are added here. I think that's a key gear change. Huge. Uh, the horse has drawn a good yeah. gate. They'll definitely try and show intent. Whether he can muster that speed to hold a position remains to be seen. But there was a funny old ro- uh, ride, or should I say, run from Pierre. Yeah. I kind of think if you're on Pierre in the Foxbridge, you've got to go again. Because he, le- he left you hanging a little bit with plenty of questions. He yeah, yeah. Wasn't really conclusive. So, And you're getting three times the price that what you touched on Foxbridge yeah. Day. You're getting mid teens to where it's roughly around about 5 or $6 in the Foxbridge. Who else, Paul? We need to talk, talk Look, about he's a value you, runner for you, mine, okay. Pierre. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Really yeah. do like. And like BP said, I, <laughs> I can't leave sharp and smart alone. Um, <laughs> no. Because you'll be kicking yourself. You will not get $6. Uh, or 6.50 mm. um, later on this season. That's the same with Legato. If Legato was to do a job on this field first up, when she's probably vulnerable at any stage of this prep heading forward, first up 1,400, if she was to do a job, how short is she going to be for the second leg? Because all indications out of the stable, she's staying here for day two mm. at least. So those two horses, if they can do the job, as BP alluded, with sharp and smart, you could be getting red odds in a few weeks' time. Yeah, what about Belle Claire's another one we haven't touched on? I mean, she looks like she's returned in fine style as well, Paul. Yeah, another one who had a dashing run in the yeah. Foxbridge, and she did look very, very good. Yeah. Um, Lisa Ladder, she's been um, going very well. She finished off last season very nicely yeah. um, and seems to be continuing on in the same vein this season. Well, so, well, yeah. Who are you going to have a bet on? Who are you going to have a bet on on this, this year's Tarzino, Paul? I'm going sharp and smart. Okay. Um, I... Oh, just the money's there too, which is look, interesting. He's got X Factor. Yep. Um, the, the price, as BP said, we mm. will hear another classic Tony yeah, Lee yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent call. Star crowd. Exactly. Booming. If, if he's got a wee bit of clear air as they come around the turn, yep. uh, I think even though the, the field is super classy, yeah. I think he just goes on and, and away with it. Yep. Pierre each way. Pierre, the value well. runner. Yep. Steve, if nail it for us. Legato, you for you? or Yeah, I'm going to go away from the Foxbridge. I mentioned it mm. post that race. The numbers just didn't stack up. It was a bunch finished. There was a few flashing lights, Belle Claire, etc. But they were, they were there to do that off the hot speed for the, to the 600. So I'm going with Legato as my main bet. And then a saver on Sharp and Smart. I think they're the two that have real X factor. We've talked about four-year-olds in this race. Uh, we mm. could be talking about these horses in genuine Group 1 races in Australia in the spring. So they'll need a pinch of luck from where they map over 1,400, short of their best. Yeah. But I'm just taking a slight set against the Foxbridge. There's a bit of sharp and smart uh, momentum here, BP. Some ice for us. 
And why not? He, he is a quality animal. Uh, he, he won out New Zealand Derby. He's won a Herbie Dyke a, a, against the older horses. So he should be uh, spoken about it as, as a leading chance uh, in the race. I, I really like La Creek myself. I, I think she is a horse that potentially could get to a better price. I, I'm not too worried about her barrier draw. Uh, I, I just keep going back to the day she won the Arrowfield. I, I mean, just think about that day that she won that race on a, on a, on a good surface. She revved up it and, and she blew them away. She, she is a high-quality Group 1 animal, and I think they've got her in the right spot. We've heard from the team about where she is in her preparation. I, I think she's ready to go. I think she's going to run in a, in a massive race. You're right, though. Legato, sharp and smart, uh, those type of horses. Gee, we haven't even mentioned Pennywick. It won two Group 1s on both sides of the Tasman. And Oaks and an Australian Oaks will be a horse. will be better when we get to the liver mole. Uh, even a Group 1 winner like Lickety Split uh, as well uh, at the... Uh, Group 1 level as a two-year-old. I think Dragon Leap is a horse that is worthy of consideration for top three and top four markets purely because he brings residual fitness into the race compared to others that haven't had that run. I think that is a a massive pointer towards his chances in this race and certainly have sharp and smart in amongst the numbers. It is going to be a super race, the Westbury Stud Tarzino Trophy here at Hawke's Bay. Steve talked about the fluctuations, some of the fluctuations last week. Let's have a look at some of the biggest movers of the week with Overs Gods. And Overs Gods were smiling. <laughs> La Quita, race one at, uh, at Rickerton. Uh, five into 270. Kylie Williams got the job done there. Up the Rabbitohs. Uh, up the Lagerfeld, race two. 11 into $6. They didn't miss that. Oh, how now, trust, don't trust my Irish, but Cleanar <laughs> Mave. I, I went to YouTube, tried to Cleanar. Cleaner Maeve, 13 into 450 and was unlucky. So you'd be following Cleaner Maeve uh, wherever you go. Powerful Moss, 750 into 450 winner. And Victor Rouge was absolutely dump trucked in the last 12 into $6. It was unlucky, fell out of the gates and was we certainly one to put in your black book. Victor Rouge, Papa Surf at Whanganui, or Whanganui rather, 16 into $6. First, don't you mind, don't mind me. Uh, at Whangan- Whanganui race eight, Makushla, interesting. If she gets a wet track, uh, you'd be stepping in. But 21's at eight and ran a pretty good fourth. And don't forget Harbour on Sunday. Uh, Lucas Olsen, the amateur rider. Uh, Sailor Jack, 11 into 420, just fell in uh, by six lengths, Sailor Jack. So Overs God's smiling. Let's hope uh, Overs God's will be smiling on customers come tomorrow afternoon. Hey. So Sullivan Award time for the week. VP, who have you found as your ride of the week? <laughs> yeah, thanks. Uh, a little, little bit like Madonna um, uh, mid-concert just, just decided to um, have a little bit of a change. <laughs> just bringing, it, bringing a new wardrobe. Um, what are we going with uh, Lance O'Sullivan? We're going to Jasmine Fawcett for her ride aboard Lagerfeld. Now, this is a horse... Uh, that was able to a get to the front, really dictate terms here. Jasmine did a super job on this horse, and it just meant it was a, 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 a case of just sprinting up the straight. So in a big field here, she just got this bang on. And the other key point around this race, there was a horse that sat outside leader in this race, uh, was Karma Sucha, who was well found in the market, has finished back in the field, couldn't sprint with Lagerfeld, and the same with the horse that was in that trailing spot. I just thought there was a ride that she nailed uh, on this occasion to Jasmine Force aboard Lagerfeld. Uh, and was happy to say that this is the ride of the week, the Lance O'Sullivan Award to Jasmine Fawcett. Yeah, well done, Jasmine. Uh, nice win. And she's returned or started the season uh, in fine style as Jasmine Fawcett. Uh, career wins 236 uh, at a strike rate of 11.3. Uh, last season, she had a very good season. 56 of those wins striking at 8.39. Uh, and this year, she's had five wins already striking every seven rides she has. So... If that can continue, uh, she'll be a jockey worth following. Uh, will Jasmine force it throughout the season? Well, I know I had it coming. I know I can't be free. Who was doing hard time, Paul, last week? Unluckiest runner of the week, unluckiest person of the week. Uh, potentially me on the punt, but um, who, who was doing hard time last weekend for you? Well, to be fair, there were a few. <laughs> there were a uh, few. <laughs> Hard luck stories last week, but uh, the one I've uh, picked oh, out, Flower of Wanaka, oh. who I think BP 
uh, as she may have actually tipped out last week. And look, she just can't get out here. The gap opens probably oh, 50 metres too late. Mm. And then once it does, she really gets uh, starts to let down um, and almost gets there in the end. So, yeah, we better clear air um, 25, 50 metres sooner. Oof, oof. And she, look at this. I think they slowly just can't get, there's just no gap there. In jail. <laughs> yeah. No chance parole. Yeah, do not collect $200. Oh, no. We know a lot yeah. of people didn't. Uh, very well backed was Flower of Wanaka. Uh, we were sticking with on Saturday potentially, Paul? You think of it, it's just going around and backing I, it up, aren't they? I was tempted to... Mm, better track, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, don't know. I thought BP might have another go. <laughs> he may well do. He's got deep pockets though, BP. That's one, that's one key around him. Well, look at the gear he's got look on. At the, look at the gear right. he's got on. Righto, boys, let's move along. What, what I will Race say, lads. Oh, sorry, what, what else? About Flower of Wanaka, uh, yes, unlucky, uh, but of course that top four price was lingering for around that 210 quote, and of course was backed into fives and $1.60 for a place, so at least that was something to take away. And then Lily got the job uh, on the following two races anyway, and Shanti Lace and Valley King, so punters rejoiced after that. We'll get to your bet of the week. He's thrown his bet of the week from last weekend already. It looks, like he's, it looks like he's just jumped off Black Magic. <laughs> <laughs> Being on the grind, on the grind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Very good. Righto, boys. Race number seven on the card is the Gold Trail Stakes for the Philly Stephen. And uh, yeah, an interesting uh, market framed up here uh, with a few first uppers. Again, the same old problem with striking here. The orchestral heads the market after a really impressive two year old campaign, a two race campaign, which saw a very stiff on debut and then came out and put a performance on the board winning at Hastings Orchestral in May. So 3.30 we've posted, got to 3.50, firm back into 3.30, but there is a little bit of trepidation around her. Quintessa, uh, Quintessa at $5 in that second line, solid. Now Shanti Lace at $6 off the original 5.50 quote. And Pina Bell, 6.50, got a shorter 6, just back out to 6.5. Onira, uh, uh, $10 off a shorter 8.5, so a little bit of a drift there. Glamour Tycoon, a firmer, 11 into 10, comes out of a strong maiden race. Tulsi, $11. Lock Katrine, well played at $16. If this race to be run right now, biggest liability sits with number 3, Lock Katrine. And Chico Majito, first up, the Ben Foot train galloper with Lisa Allpress doing the riding here. 18, got a size 26 on Thursday morning, been backed in to the original price $18 with that natural high lay price. Again, a losing liability with number three, Lot Katrine. Okay, PP, we probably need to focus on the favourite here in Orchestral. Uh, we saw it as a two-year-old, looked impressive, uh, and been to the trials as well. I think this is the two-year-old two win at the Bay. Yeah, look, good horsey, v very good horse. Uh, a, a horse that is the $6 favourite for the 1,000 guineas. You can get that boosted at $8. Now, if you like Orchestral tomorrow, uh, that eight dollars might disappear. So uh, maybe venture into that market if you believe that she's going to come out and, and perform to this sort of level. Uh, I mean, her first up run was exceptional. Of course, it was uh, in a strong race where uh, you'd be wanting to follow Molly Bloom next Friday when it goes to Topor, who was just as good in that race with Orchestral out of Avondale. The winner was highly spruiked and and just a floozy. And this trial was just nice and quiet, but it just also leapt out of the page, didn't it? Uh, there was a lot of pike runners in this particular trial, and then you just see this, uh, the red and white diamonds just ducking in behind, a little bit of duck and weaving, and then hitting the line strongly, doing what she needed to do. So she's in a good spot for this race. I'm also looking forward to seeing her on, on that, that improved track condition. We've seen her in that soft bracket where they were rated at a soft six. That likelihood of getting to that, that four region, uh, I, I think that's exciting for her because, as I said, she's got that change-up speed. She can quicken. Um, I, I'm really excited to see her tomorrow. I, I think she's a horse that um, uh, really can pick up a group one this season, and that's why she is the, the, the favourite for the 1,000 guineas. Yeah, no doubt. Look, uh, the trial I want to look at here next is it's got Tulsi and Penderbell and Quintessa at Tirapa. Obviously, a few contenders here, Steve. Uh, a trial worth looking at. Yeah, obviously we've seen a few of these horses post this trial run at Taupo, which we'll see shortly. But in Pender Bell, just highlighting that particular individual, it was a good trial. It's had a couple of trials leading in, which you'd suggest it's ready to go on a good track tomorrow in Pender Bell. It showed enough as a juvenile, and it has enough tactical speed to use a reasonable gate and barrier six with Cozzy aboard. So 
Interesting runner, showed enough as a two-year-old, but it's always a tricky one how to assess these three-year-olds. Have they regressed, improved from a juvenile campaign? Uh, we'll shortly see, but Impenda Bell, well-respected at 650, top flight was $7. Well, I thought yeah. she was tough as teak as a two-year-old. She was, she was, she was, I would say honest, but that's probably doing her a disservice. I, I think so, she, yeah. she was a bit better than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, yeah. absolutely. She always looked like she was a campaign away. Some of those mm. robust, more forward, and progressive two-year-olds had the better of her at the back end of the season after she won her first two races. But yeah, she always had like three old women all over in Penderbell, yeah, so okay. I look forward to her running tomorrow. Yeah, when Quintessa and uh, Locke Katrine and Tulsi come out of that trial and they went to the races at Taupo, uh, when Quintessa came out on top, Steve. Love this win. Love this race as a whole. I think this is the key form race if you want to direct your your bets towards a race leading into this. Obviously, we've got a few horses at a first up, but in terms of a race in the last few weeks, this is the one if you want to identify the key form line heading into the gold trail. Crawled. They did crawl, they did crawl, but I love Quintessa through the line. She ran very sharp sectionals. You see there the class rating plus 2.4 lengths. If you compare it to the race that happened prior to this, which was Solidify's race, it actually rated three lengths above Solidify's performance on the day, yeah. uh, both over a sprinting trip, okay. Quintessa. I would have, I was so keen on Quintessa. If she had drawn a gate, I would have been keen to see her as my best bit of the day at Hastings, but she's just drawn that niggly gate. Yeah. I think if she had drawn a gate, she would have really challenged top line betting against Orchestral. That's how much I rate Quintessa. I love her pedigree. It will suggest that over trip will be no dramas going forward or deep into the spring. You just got to rely on Opie Bossa now. He is a key factor, again, with the algorithms around the stable, short SPs. There will be traction for her, but I'm, I'm willing to see what happens in the last five minutes of trading around her. Mm -hmm. If she firms in from their roughly round five, 550 price line, I think Opie will show intent. That might be their green light that will look to show intent if we get a decent firm, and obviously vice versa, if the marketplace is a mm -hmm. little bit easy on her. Do we give um, BP this last replay, Paul, or um, with Shanti Lace winning the Wanganui Guineas, or do you want to take it? No. <laughs> <laughs> Give it to BP. Oh, I, I thought she was super. Um, a lovely, lovely uh, ride there by well, Lily was on again, yeah. yeah. It was a big one, Pops. Got away, did everything right, uh, Shanti Lace that day at Wanganui. It did. And, and look, we spoke uh, at length about how this might unfold for this horse because we've seen uh, Shanti Lace, uh, you know, look, been able to position up. They decided to, uh, from a wide draw, go back and then really circle into the race. Uh, so, look, it's a, it's a big effort. Now this is not Whanganui, this is a, a, a different venue for the horse today, uh, coming into tomorrow should I say. Beating some of the boys though, I mean that, that's another thing we need to, to point out here, she comes back to her own sex uh, for this race, she's also competing uh, on a better surface but don't let that put you off, uh, she ran a super race when finishing fifth in the Manawa Two Size Produce Stakes which was on what was a soft five uh, when she finished into fifth position, she was a very unlucky third on a good four surface uh, and behind Tulsi. I think you've always got to respect these horses that have had themselves uh, a run under the belt. And yes, this one was only seven days ago, uh, but I think it's a key point for her running a big race here on the weekend. Bit low draw, they might be able to look to try and use that barrier draw with her. Uh, look, she's six dollars, uh, and I can understand why with what she was able to do there. A, a step up again, but I think she's more than capable. What do you think? There's a few more chances, Paul. Here, I would have thought. I mean, we haven't talked about Glamour Tycoon yet. Uh, who resumed very well. Um, Tulsi, yes. Lot Katrine, Chika Mojito. Who else do we need to talk about in the gold trail? Look, Glamour Tycoon has tweaked my interest. $10. Um, yeah, look, she was uh, second behind a very smart one last week. Um, also has some uh, form as a two-year-old. She was second to both Solidify, who was right in the market of the uh, Sir Colin Meads, uh, and Viva Vienna. Finished second to Viva Vienna, who, of course, we saw go on and win uh, was it last week at Rickenham? Mm. Mm, okay, good point. So Glamour Tiger, and I saw there was some early money and now it looks like um, she's just she's drifted out again. She's the map horse Glamour Tiger and there's a bit of speed coming across on it. Uh, Tutti will hold a position from a wide gate. Phil Tilt will use that ace draw. I think Craig Grills aboard Glamour Tiger and should be one out, one back and in that in that slipstream come the business end of the race. So she is the map horse if you're going on that alone. Okay, she looks like she's got some scope though, this orchestral, off what we've seen. Absolutely, she could put this field away and no one would be disappointed or surprised orchestral. She has that X factor, she comes out of the right stable, she's had a light trial leading in. Yeah, she's going to be a sticky one on the map, I don't think they'll show in 10 too early, she'll be in the second half of the field. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, where her price ends up, I, I don't know, but uh, there is a bit of trepidation around that $3.30 mark uh, yeah. in the first two or three hours. I'm, I'm taking a little bit of a set against the Whanganui, or Whanganui Guineas last week. Uh, Shanti Lace, just on the numbers, needs to improve two and a half lengths against Quintessa, etc. But look, I respect they're doing the quick backup. I just had a marked around about $10 uh, versus the six fifty on offer. OK, final thoughts, Pops, on the uh, gold trail. Yeah, look, Orchestra's my, my, my top selection in the race. Um, I'm also wary, though. I think this is a race where 1,200 metres, awkward gate, potentially going to get back. I'm, I'm not certainly diving in to any price here, to be honest with you. I, I'd be happy to take a top three, top four price, run her through some multis and see her running on and hitting the line and seeing her in that right spot. She's a horse I want to follow throughout this uh, this three-year-old filly season because I think she's, she's top draw. So I've made her my top pick in the race. And I, I think just think Shanti Lace potentially can be in that right spot closer uh, from a good draw that brings her right into the race. But huge respect around Quintessa as well. But yeah, orchestral, I'll make as my top selection. Yeah, OK. Going to be a great race, the Gold Trail Stakes. We promised it last week. It is back. Time for Minute with Moati. Who have you got? Uh, I caught up with uh, someone who's decided to, uh, I guess, make New Zealand their home for the, the time being. Let's go with Minute with Moati. Time for another Minute with Moati, and this time I'm joined by Warren Kennedy, who's riding as well as the Springboks at the moment. It's my same nickname I've got now, it's Wagga. Flowers by Marty Cyrus, my daughter, she loves it, so I probably, that's probably the last one I downloaded. But the John Travolta. Oh, right, we're going disco. Yeah, we got oh, it, no, got with, it. Um, was it Pulp Fiction? Pulp Fiction, yeah, great movie. Other than myself, I'm not, I'm, well, I'm pretty organised, I would say, but, um, oh, I really don't know. It's really a tough one. I'd probably be looking to go into law. Um, I was, I was beginning to study law before I got accepted from the academy in South Africa, so that was probably where I would have gone. Um, yeah, I used to do gymnastics as well, I was pretty, pretty good. You, are we talking the floor, are we talking... Uh, all around, really. Oh, it's... Oh, I don't think you can hear that, to be honest with you. But um, the PG rated is, right. is, is basically, uh, take your stuff, don't come back. <laughs> Of course, I'm a bit ballsy, so it must be J Jason Statham, it must be. Oh, oh just nah, not. Or Pee Wee Herman, I'm not too <laughs> sure, but, but a mixture between the two. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll stick with Jason. <laughs> uh, it'll probably be the Summer Cup in South Africa on uh, Summer Pudding. It was her target, and Philly against the boys, drawn the poorest out of the lot to carry top weight, and she trounced them by four lengths, so that was a fantastic win. Vale Pee Wee Herman, Vale Pee Wee Herman, oh. uh, recently passed away. One yeah. of the greats. One of the greats. <laughs> and a closet gymnast, uh, Warren Kennedy. Maybe not closet either. No, no. He's, well, he's shown he's fairly flexible on a, uh, on a pony. <laughs> yeah, very good. Yep. Yeah. No, thanks to Warren Kennedy. Plenty more minutes with Moate in store. A keen Springbok uh, supporter. Yeah, well, we won't talk about that, will we? Uh, anyway. Uh, race number seven. Oh, sorry, race number five, I should say, Steve, is the L Rocker. Sir Colin Mead's trophy. And oh, here we go. The mm. resumption of a very, very good two year old here. Mm, intriguing race that is. I uh, want a mini on the card, but Tokyo Tycoon heads the market at 220. That's the original price. Look, it's not going to be drifting anytime soon. Um, mm. I think the traders are almost at a stage of bringing it in. It accounts for roughly 65% of the hold, a number of four figure bets on Tokyo Tycoon. So plenty of support. For the gun two-year-old resuming here, solidify at three dollars, Cadigo at seven dollars, burn to shine with that run under the belt has been a firmer, seven fifty into seven dollars. Uh, Discovery Bay, sixteen out to eighteen, best of the rest, Lord Wayburn at thirty-one dollars. So in terms of an overall summary, Tokyo Tycoon, not the best bat runner just in this race, Thaddeus, mm. but on the ten race card at Hastings. Yeah, well, it's sort of all about Tokyo Tycoon BP and that Karaka million win. Uh, speaking about Lance O'Sullivan Awards. Uh, this was had to be seen to be believed. Zaki. Yeah, look, uh, Craig Zaki can can take the lot here in terms of uh, Lance O'Sullivan awards uh, with this ride here aboard this runner in Tokyo Tycoon in the Karaka Million. It was a peach, wasn't it? Uh, and look, he's a runner that is the benchmark uh, from last season uh, uh, with our two-year-olds. Uh, he was super on this occasion. 
Uh, and look, I know that he's obviously won at his next start, but then he was later disqualified. But he, he really is the benchmark. T trials. Uh, you know, what do we sort of take away from his trials with how he's trialled up? Uh, and so, yeah, sorry, just t talking about his trials uh, leading into this, I guess that's the one little question mark with where he might be coming into this. This was his last of his trials when uh, finishing into sixth position behind Aromatic. Look, he wasn't overly pushed down the straight. He's he's had a good hit out. He's had uh, a, a, a spin round Tadapa as well. But I, I get the feeling he's going to be desperately short by the time this race comes around tomorrow. I, I like the fact that he's going to get himself on a, on a good surface. We saw Dynastic run in this race last year, uh, who, of course, was beaten by Pierre on a very heavy surface. Barry number 10, he's got options open here, how he wants to play it. Um, I'm, I'm sure he's going to be many uh, best bets out there for punters out there on, on the programme tomorrow, Tokyo Tycoon. Mm, yeah, no doubt. What, do you put much stock in that trial, um, Paul? What do you think of that trial? Look, it wasn't the most impressive, mm. um, but it doesn't worry me, yeah. as BP said. He was the dominant two-year-old mm. of last season. He has got a stack of class, and class will get you a whole <laughs> lot of... It happens to be a trend with the progeny of Satona Aladdins. They just do enough when it comes to track work and trials, and then when they get to race day, it's game on. So, mm. um, yeah, I have noticed that with the, the progeny of Satona Aladdins. OK, that's interesting. Mm. Uh, look, speaking of good two-year-olds, there's another one that resumed at Topo, uh, Solidify, and I see Discovery Bay in this race as well, Steve, but nice to see Solidify come over and do this on a distance, probably short of its best, you'd suggest. He did a bit wrong in the straight. You see there laid out. He ducked back in in between horses to get the job done by Pimple. You see there red numbers. In terms of to the 600, last 600, that's against open class. So no knock there. The class rating, not a huge knock, but maybe just wanted to see a little bit more in that class rating compared to Quintessa, who was very dominant in the later race on that day. Uh, look, he was, he was there to win that. Money indicated that he was ready mm, to go. Mm. He had had enough work driven into him at Taupo. So, look, there'll be improvement. Always will be for a horse like that. Uh, and obviously, he's just got to iron out a few greenness problems, but I'm sure the stable working on that. He's got the shadow roll on, which is always an indication that he, he's just doing a few things wrong in his action, etc. So, mm. look, he's a good horse. Oh, I just feel with the marketplace around Tokyo Tycoon, that solidify major from the $3 flat price. Mm. You look at Tokyo Tycoon, yes, the trials have been fair, but that has been up against genuine weight for Asia Open class horses. And remember, he is a three-year-old, yet they officially turned three Tokyo Tycoon. So, um, look, he's got that algorithm that pro punders love, Opie Boss, and Tiaokao and a strong SP profile, albeit as a juvenile. So mm. with that score, I just feel if you want solidify in your betting, wait. just wait oh. a touch or so. I think that $3 may drift. Okay. He's got intestinal fortitude, that boy. Solidify? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. will yeah. to win. He just, yeah, yeah. never gives up. Yeah, just, okay. just on the map, Solidify yeah. and Tokyo Tycoon are both drawn the wide marbles. Just on their overall summary, I know it's a small database, uh, from their two-year-old year, you'd naturally think they'll go back to the last third. If the track's playing even, and we'll see a few races unfold prior to this race, there is a lot of speed BP in this race. You're looking at Cadigo, Rizeki, Discovery Bay, packing ro uh, uh, sorry, a party rocking the local. I've got that actually leading. And then you've got Lord Wayburn and Burn to Shine who will try and hold a spot from Decent Alley. So I think there's enough speed for those two horses that are at the top of the market not to be concerned about. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. Bang on the mark. Uh, I think there's enough pressure in here to be able to just let those horses sit back, let that involve uh, in front of them, uh, and, yeah, power up over the top. I, I think, as you said there, Stephen, if you think Solidify is going to be drifting in the market and wait, maybe get on Tokyo Tycoon now because $2.20, it may not be here for too much longer. Yeah, exactly. Well, Burn to Shine's the other one we need to touch on, Paul. Uh, resume nicely with the one and uh, $7 around Burn to Shine. Good to see this. Yeah, it was a lovely win uh, here, and uh, from the one draw, uh, Warren Kennedy can sort of dictate exactly where he wants to posse up uh, in this race. So, yeah, just keep keep coming um, down the straight there at Tarapa. Uh, oh, I thought a super and a, a super way to come into this race. Yeah, yeah, and absolutely the run under its belt. Okay, we've got a bit behind time, boys. Paul. Who are you having on top Tokyo here? Tokyo Tycoon. Yeah, OK, very good. Short and sweet. You'll be the Tycoon, resuming. Steve? I'll be watching the race. I won't be diving into it. But, uh, look, I'm hoping Tokyo Tycoon can show its true colours and forget those trials, just trust on what we've seen as a juvenile. Plenty of money for Tokyo Tycoon, Pops. Yep, plenty of money, and I uh, mm. can understand it. Riziki. 
maiden as at race, race number four, and it's looked like it's going for the Colin Meach Trophy. It's a horse I wanted to be backing next time to the races after its great effort behind Channel Surfer. Maybe we'll just have to keep the powder dry. <laughs> Very good. Uh, look, we're running out of time, but I did want to have a quick look at race number 10, Steve. Uh, White Noises race, the Open 1600. Uh, $3 around White Noise. Yeah, well played too. He's up and running White Noise. 330 dollars under $3. I'm guessing if he can put a performance to satisfaction, uh, he, we may see him on day two in the Arrowfield. White Noise over 1,600 metres. But well played, 3.30 into 3. Campanessa well played as well, $5. Hasn't budged and best of the rest is not ideal. Up and running, 5.50 out to 6. OK, Paul, you've got 30 seconds to surmise this race and give us your selection. Go. Oh, I see the money's already on. White Noise, 3.30 into $3. Mm. Um, that tweaks my interest. The last up win, uh, the mile, all really, really good from this redraw. Looks good. If I'm going in each way, um, don't want to look at Monza. 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 Only has to carry 51 kilos on uh, Saturday. Yeah, okay. Very good. Uh, you might worry, worried about that. You are a star money, I see down there. Red team. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, is that the Auckland Cup winner? No. Mm, from a couple yeah, seasons yeah, yeah, back. Yep. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, BP, race number 10 on the card. The Open 1600. Uh, what are you thinking? And give us your selection. You are a star. Did troll good. Uh, so mm. I can understand why there has been a nibble. Tough race, isn't it? Because there's so many horses returning here. I thought Chase's trial was very good. Uh, drawn low. Uh, has to be a chance in this race. Look, White Noise, just bear in mind too, Donovan Cooper's not riding this horse, won't be claiming the four kilos. It is Joe Doyle. Uh, Joe Doyle riding the horse here uh, in the last race on the programme, so will be at the carded weight of 57 kilograms. I do like his chances. I thought it was Wimmer Super last time out of the races. He is a, a, a Group 1 horse. But so is Campionessa. Uh, Campionessa's run second in two Group 1's last preparation. Uh, I thought there was enough in her quiet trial uh, where she was beaten in behind them at Topo. Uh, big respect around here in the race. Um, but yeah, look, there's a lot of chances and some genuine Group 1 horses in that last race. Time for a bit of foreplay, I believe, boys. Oh, yeah. Time for foreplay. Your chance to win a $100 bonus bet multi on our four selections, our good things of the weekend. Now, it's fair to say we're 0-2. Uh, of the four of us, only one has had a click both weekends, and that is me. Funnily enough, I'm you know, not going to blow my own trumpet. Rocket Science was a late scratching, but I'm going to, I'm going to claim it. So that's a collect, is it? Well, it's a collect in terms of the multi, isn't it? So, that, so that's how I'm still live. No good to the punter, though. <laughs> well, no good, because you didn't get your one home. Uh, uh, BP, four-play selection, or Kestrel? I sort of remember I Wish I Win ran in the top four um, <laughs> last week in the Memsey Stakes. Just re refresh my memory if, 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 if that's not true, Thad. Um, much as you were blowing your horn there. Um, don't mind orchestral, though, in, t in terms of blowing horns. Uh, let's uh, get around orchestral. Uh, this is a horse that I like as a top four chance uh, and is around that buck, buck 35 price, I think. Paul, you've gone loose. You've gone loose this week. You, you... Well, I saw what you guys did and I thought we need to boost it up. And look, if this does is not successful... I will go all conservative next week and I'll, uh, I'll put in a very short price, okay. sure thing. But for this week, race two at Hastings, number 12, Belcamina for a top three finish. Um, I thought that was a nice, nice run at Topor, uh, fresh up. Um, and she'll be a lot better for that. Sam Weatherly mm -hmm. rides, trained by Guy Lowry. A lot of positives yeah, there. Yeah, we need it at $2.50. Steve, uh, you've gone to Ruakaka race one? Yeah, Dancing Dream just has the best form up north at Ruakaka. Has to step up to seven furlongs, but I think they'll use Barrier 7, come across, sit in the first two or three. That's where she's been profiling of late. As I mm. mentioned, she's had two seconds in behind Chris Shetty. There's no better form than that going around up north. Top three finish, okay. Dancing Dream, $1.35. Well, I've gone Georgia versus Australia. Georgia plus the points. Plus 32.5 points, alternate line. $1.35. I think the big Georgians can keep it a little bit closer than 32 points against Australia in the World Cup. So that's my four-play bet. Go to the Facebook page or go to the go to the Facebook's page? Uh, yeah, in around about an hour's time, head yeah. to the TAB Facebook page mm. um, and there'll be a question there, a leg-up question. Um, you just answer it and then you'll go in the draw um, to win uh, mm. that multi that we've already put on. Yeah. So the multi's on. Um, if it's successful, is around what? Just over $500 yeah. cash to the lucky punter. So okay. do that before 4 p.m. on Friday. Paul Zane, so Hinton. Paul Zane Hinton. It says last week's winner there, but he wasn't really. He won the $100, but we couldn't get the money from it. This week, 
I've got a good feeling as long as your uh, $2.50 shot can get home. OK, boys, we better get to best bet time. But before we do, we need to look at how we went last week. Let's review it. I can see BP uh, just grinning, grinning before we start. Yeah, well, I'm going to go to something that I'm a little bit more capable of doing, and that's uh, swinging for the fences and, and more going across the line uh, towards Cow Corner uh, instead of punching one for one. Uh, let's go Shanti Lace, a horse who loves Whanganui. Uh, two from two at this venue. Uh, was so good in the Castle Town when winning there in June, hoping for a similar result. So we'll go race number seven, number six, and Shanti Lace. Shanti Lace over on the outside. Landon Ways trying to out tough it. The filly, I think, Shanti Lace just. I'm going to head down to Rickerton, race six. Um, and the top of the market is dominated by uh, their Tiako stable. I don't mind the look of number eight, Mary Wecker. Are those percentages right? Are you still 44%, plus 44%? That cut, has that been adjusted? That's been adjusted. Okay, okay. <laughs> going, for seven, going for right. $7.50 and taking on Tiako. So. Uh, brave as always is Paul Moade. Here's a very, very talented horse. One at ease down from the 50. It's business time. Brilliant. Beat Watch Out. Third in Rhonda Wood. Fourth to go by in disguise. Then came Benno from Grania Fedicare. Next across Coat de Bone from Zoolander. More Mary. Archerfield. Where's Wally? Mary Wicker and King to run. I'll go to Whanganui, race four, the maiden 1340. Three-year-old taking on older horses here, the Matador from the Marsh Barn. Last season as a juvenile, he finished a close second in the Champagne Stakes. You didn't That's ask him if the 19% had been adjusted. Well, I sort of believe that. It's wow. sort of a belief. <laughs> Perception's reality. Well, you believe that Steve would be 90% up. 44. Tough crowd. Yeah, tough crowd. Hey, you, hey, you earned it, mate. You earned it. Peppery on the inside and Turkey, Peppery Brave and Peppery Beach Turkey, the ugly sister, then Cheval de Fudre. Back behind them, Sky Cruiser. Maggie Ruth was the next. The Matador didn't show us much. Touch of Paradise and Maureen Zeta. Gee, you boys have got to work today. I need the binos to see Mary Wick across the line there. Uh, she's a good horse. She'll have her day. BP, you're only as good as your last effort. Uh, where'd you go for your best bet this week? Yeah, look, I was really waiting for the odds to come out for Rua Kaka, and when they came out, I, I sort of had to rub my eyes a couple of times when I was looking at the horse I want to have a bet on. Pearl of Alsace came up at $2.40 in race number five in an open handicap over 1,400 metres. The horse won five races last season and was desperately unlucky uh, when competing at a Group 1 at her last start to the races when finishing fourth. She could have finished second. Uh, she is a very... Very good mare and could be here for some Group 1 racing with the Mauritian magician aboard in Ashwin Gundasami. I like Pearl of Alsace in race number five at Ruakaka. Paul, your best bet, please. Oh, I've learnt my Tiako lesson. <laughs> you come uh, back on the train, guys. Yeah, so I'm uh, going to Hastings, uh, race five, the El Rocker, Sir Colin Meads Trophy, uh, and the form two year old of last season, Tokyo Tycoon. Um, look, Opie Bosson, Tiako. Yeah. Enough said. You're looking to get on the board. Back down to 42%, so uh, hopefully you yeah, can... Adjust like... Yeah, adjusted again, as you can see. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can see it's been adjusted this yeah. week, yeah. Stephen, best bet uh, for you this week, please. Yeah, I'll head up to Ruakaka, race for the Kitty Kitty Cup over 2,200 metres. Number four, the local cake by the ocean. Last start performance, I thought he was vulnerable first time over ground, but he got the job done. I reckon he'll be an improver, even though he's had that one run over ground now, cake by the ocean. He'll sit on speed. He's a hard horse to beat, 3.5. OK. It's beautiful. There's the best bets. Paul, uh, promos, what do we need to know before we get out of here? Uh, so, bonus back. So, slightly different this sad day because mm -hmm. it's uh, the first group. Oh, let's have a look at the Everest first. Um, being to win the ultimate trip to the Everest to support the Trackside Media's runner. I wish I win. Um, all you have to do is a comment, uh, uh, put your top three uh, runners for the Tarzino Trophy in order on the TAB Everest Giveaway Facebook post before 3.58 uh, tomorrow, okay. Saturday. Yep. Um, so you want the first, second and third horse. And if you are correct, you'll uh, go in the draw um, to win that ultimate package to the Everest. Uh, we've got the bonus back, of course. First six races at Hastings and the first four races 
at Ruakaka, the Valley and Rose Hill. OK, very good. We're out of time. Uh, getting behind the Cancer Society as well. Cancer, so Cancer Society silks on one runner in every race at Hastings if they win $2,000 to the Cancer Society from the TAB. Bye-bye, BP. Have a good day. I know you will. Certainly will. I think it's going to be a very special race day coming up here tomorrow. Can't wait for it. Thanks, boys. Thanks, boys, for your efforts, as always. Cheers, Dad. Cheers. OK, Looking very forward. good. Enjoy your Saturday. We'll see you seven days' time on the leg up.